In today's video, we are going to talk about star bases. Star bases are built by constructors. They can go by a lot of different names. In this case, the possibility engine. You start with three main categories of starbase. Mining, communication, and military. There's also a fourth starbase called economic, but we'll get into that later. Planning out how you want to build your star base is important. This is a resource that you can mine. The mining option only shows up if they're in range. These are precursor relics. You need a communications base for that, but they're just out of range. Of the three options, if you pick a mining base first, you can make a communications base later. But if you pick communications first, you can't make mining later. And if you pick military, you're just stuck with military and can't do anything else. Just select the type that you want and press the Construct Starbase button. Now the Starbase is built, but it has this little arrow telling you that you can upgrade. You click on Management and you go inside. This gives you, this is just the person who's in it. It says a little bit about their stats and whatnot. This is its attack and defense, hit points, sensor range. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and build a communication star base. And that actually ups my mining a little bit. And it gives me one influence growth and plus 25 percent and it also has a maintenance fee now that the starbase is open i still need to expand the reach of my base so that it can get to the precursor relics so you'll have to research a little bit but you get the support field stabilization which adds two range to your starbase and it costs one module and one precursor nanite. So this thing and this thing. If you're going to make a lot of star bases, you need to keep track of this, this, and this more than anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and build that. And now, as you can see, my star base has expanded to the point that the ascension crystals are all within range. Now after you expand your star base, you're going to have to wait a turn for the game to register that it's been expanded. Once that's done, you can get the Xeno Archaeology Lab. It costs a module, and after you build that, you are able to research the, in this case, Ascension Crystal and Research Relic. Now those will come in next turn. First you build it, and then they research it. You can add to the amount of benefit that you get from your precursor relics. In this case, just for having the archaeology lab, I'll get a 5% boost. But if I build the ancient studies center, that adds another 6%, bringing it up to an 11% boost. And there are actually several advances that come after that on how far you can bring it up. At one point I was getting over a 50% increase from the precursor relic that I was researching. There are other things you can do with your base. You can add defense. Now the military star base gives you more options in the subject matter of defense. But you can beef up your defense a little bit right now by clicking the Starbase Defense System. And now all of these things are popped up to four. And there's an Advanced Starbase Defense System, which costs three antimatter. So make sure you got plenty of that. And now they're up to six in all of their attacks. You can build a perimeter scanner. It gives your sensor power. I guess if you're trying to look for things, you can see a little farther. It also gives you 5% influence growth. 
and it only costs one thulium so I'll get that and I might as well go ahead and upgrade it again and then you've got your cultural forums these are the ones that really make your territory grow or in other words that circle that's yours it'll get bigger faster if you build a bunch of these the, the first one costs a harmony crystal that's these things up here you can get harmony crystals produced on the ground if you have the right things and then you can also get them from the choices you make when you're given options this one costs two harmony crystal but it gives me 33 percent on top of the 25 percent i already have bringing it to 83 percent and there are actually several more that come after that you can also use your star bases offensively in this case a, another civilization decided to post up in my sector and colonize a bunch of planets. I don't want to go to all-out war with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a communication star base right in between these two planets here. Go and level it up a bunch. Now you just have to wait one turn. Now the starbase has already enveloped the territory. It'll take a little bit of time for it to fill in this area and take over the planets, but its growth rate with two extensions on communication is significantly faster than any colony. Once it gets there, it's going to look like this, and there's going to be a little hand raised saying that the influence is in dispute and people have begun to rebel. And it'll take a little while for you to fully take over a planet that way. I think it's about five to ten turns. It depends on how powerful the influence is. Could be longer. Now, if you look at the diplomacy, these Draith are not happy campers. I'm getting a minus two for trying to culture flip. Oh, they shouldn't have been building in my territory in the first place. But it's not a full out war. The third type of star base is military and they're best used for defense. If you put a military star base at the entry of every sector, you'll be much better defended. There might be other uses for them too. That's the best one I can really see. Just click on military. And when you go to manage, your ability to do anything else has been cut off once you go military. You can still expand the range, which doesn't help much now, but later on in the game, you'll actually have upgrades that increase the fighting power of any fleet within range. To get upgrades for your military star bases, you need to pay attention to the details of each option. In this case, we've got countermeasures, which requires two Illyrium and gives you a point defense of plus five. The way you know it represents star bases is that little symbol down there that kind of looks like a star base. This is an example of a military star base that's been leveled up quite a bit. It already has some defenses in here. I've got a new harpoon I can add to it which builds up its missile attacks. See, it went up to seven. Now down here, we have basically an improvement to the sector defense grid or defense network, which basically means that everything flying within the area of the star base gets a boost if a battle happens within that area and it actually even lists everything that's in the area that would be affected by that you can also station fleets on 
your star bases to provide added defense. You have up to 60 logistics on any star base. Economic star bases have the effect of enhancing worlds that are nearby. So I think a world has to be within the range of this circle in order for you to be able to build one. Once you build an economic star base, you can't make it anything else. But you still have a lot of options here. You can put on the old defenses just like all the other non-military star bases have. You can upgrade the length but I only recommend you do that if you need more room. If there's a planet that's just out of reach you want to get to. So you can build a research laboratory which gives you 10% research to every planet in the area. Which is followed by another 10% from the zero-g experimentation. That's why you need these hypersilicate things. First, I didn't know what to do with them, but they're for these economic star bases. Now, you actually keep researching, and I think there are about four or five on each of these categories. But the other categories are you can increase manufacturing if you have enough tetrapod hives. You can increase the market, which is the gross income. But you need tetrapod hives as well. And then you can also increase the value of any trade route. Make sure that you actually have trade routes for that nearby planet before you build this one. But that can help quite a bit too. And they also require tetrapod hives. When you build a mining starbase for antimatter, you can get all three of them. Just get as close to it as you can, and then when you build your star base, you will be able to expand to get that last part later. Now, in a mining star base, you also have the option of building a military. So you can have mining and military, as long as you build the mining part first. It provides added protection over time. With enough research, military star bases have a lot more fighting power than communication ones do. Just know that whenever you build a star military star base, if it's near someone else's territory, they look at that as a sign of aggression. And now you can expand the territory, and later on you can make it a heavily defended base. Now, star bases are typically the most expensive thing in the game. You need one maintenance just to build it, and then whatever module you add will bring another maintenance. So that's about two maintenance for every one of them. But if you get all the way up on the Liberty ideology, you can spend one culture point on private ownership. Which means you pay nothing for star bases and you can spam them as much as you want. And that might be the most powerful purchase you can make in the game. Thank you for watching another episode of SS Street Fighter. Leave a like, leave a comment, and click subscribe to join the Street Fighter arm. I'd also like to send a thank you to my Patreon supporters, Charles and Nancy.